The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the Guillotine Grapevine, a podcast for the land of 10,000 wrestlers. 10,000 wrestlers. Now, here's your host, award-winning wrestling broadcast journalist, Jason Bryant. Guillotine Grapevine on location at the New Digs for the Pinnacle School of Wrestling here in now Roseville. Moved from Shoreview to Roseville right by FedEx. New facility. Talking with Jared Lawrence, one of the co-founders. Brandon Paulson's out running practice. We'll talk about the guys who he's working with a practice right now in a little bit. But, uh, Jared, got a big place here now, man. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. It it wasn't something that was necessarily was it was sparked because of uh, a lease that was ending. So we we kind of it forced us to go bigger. But um, we're really happy with it, and I think uh, talking with all the parents and all the wrestlers, they all seem like happy. And you know, it's it's kind of like their home. So now they just have a nicer home. They got a bigger locker room. The parents have their own room. The kids have their own room because a lot of times we have kids. Um, they have an older brother that goes to one practice and then the other one has to wait. So at least they have a place where they can hang out. I mean, my kids were like playing tag in the hallways <laughs> the other day as they were waiting for something to get done. It was pretty funny. When you look at the evolution of this place and this camp and maybe how, how this or this club fits in the landscape of Minnesota wrestling, when you guys started this thing, I mean, how many years ago was it? And, and how basically give us the short version of how this whole thing came together. Um, well, so Pinnacle started back in 2005. That was like uh, myself, Luke Becker, um, Matt Nagel was helping out a little bit. Mac Ryder was helping out when he got done. Um, and it was really a, a way to kind of help kids. We just did a preseason high school and then we did a youth just Sundays only. And we did that for about three years. And then, um, then and where was that starting on it? Was that, that, that always a short view or was no, it? No, no. So we floated there. So we started in Moundsview high school the first year, then year two, we went to Rogers cause we had a guy out there that had a facility. Um, and then we got kind of too big. He had like four mats, but he had pillars in the middle. So it just it it just it spacing wise we ended up getting too big for that and then we went to um Augsburg after that for a couple of years just cuz they had a big enough room and then we did we started a freestyle program like right before Brandon came in which was like our first year every trying that and it was you know was small enough we just did that at the U um and then we did the youth on Sundays only um at the U you know during that you know, during that period of time too. And then in 2008, that's when I started talking to Brandon. He was helping me train with some stuff. And, um, I said, I, I think this thing can, I think it can work. And he was uh, on board and that's when we started, uh, piecing the puzzles together. When you look at making a, a wrestling school, a, a club, whatever you want to actually put a title on it, and making it a business, making it something that's not just uh, a side hustle, so to speak. There's a lot more acceptance for that now, and there's a lot more demand for it now than there was even when we were coming through. We're pretty much close to the same age. But, you know, when I grew up in, in my area, it was the Peninsula Wrestling Association where I where I grew up. And on the south side, there was maybe two or three clubs total. Now you're seeing private training clubs and uh, super clubs show up. But this is still a very localized type of club, but it's also you know got that super club feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. 100 percent. Um, I, I I think it's probably him and I, you know, together. I, we just we seem to mend well where his weaknesses are. That's my strengths. My weaknesses are his strengths. Um, it works well. The kids, they have fun. They love it. I mean, the kids they, that the, one of the greatest compliments I, I say it all the time is parents tell us that they give their option to like, hey, we don't need to go in to practice tonight and they they will freak out they'll be like no way we're going so that's to me that's when kids want to wrestle let's be honest wrestling a lot of times is not the most fun until you really learn the the toughness side of it and how to how what it can do for you it's just not it's just not that fun of a sport um and so when they when the kids buy into that i, I think it's cool i think that's that's awesome how quickly did you really start getting kids, you know, Griffin Perriott's in here working out with Brady Berge right now. 
How soon were you starting to get kids that were, you know, New, New Prague and Casson are not an easy drive from here. Granted, they're, they're visiting from college, but in high school, you know, get, getting Griffin Perry out to come up. That's, that's a good little, little trek. So when did you guys start realizing that this is good, This was going to explode and kids were coming from more than just the metro area? Yeah. Um, you know, like even back, even back in like, I, I think for kids, it was just, um, bringing some good kids together and having fun. Cause even back in like 2005, 2006, we had guys like Cameron Sakura that were coming from like border West, you know, every Sunday. That's, that's when like, you say border, you like mean Fargo, like... <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> you know, and then it just, as, as it, as it built up and, you know, we did a lot of times, this is a little bit pre pre Paulson, um, you know, Wednesdays we did satellite sites, but we did them all an hour away. So, like, I drove to St. Cloud every Wednesday, and Mac drove down to Rochester every Wednesday to try to get that name branched out a little bit. So I, that that you know may have some some rationale behind it. And then you know when you have good success and you have people that see you know they they love what they do, and it, it's just it's just all it's a it's like a plague, <laughs> a good plague. When you get the freestanding facility, when you get the space like this or over the place over at Shoreview, the kind of industrial park, kind of a blank canvas almost, is that really when things kind of started taking off? Yeah, I, you know, we when 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 we started um, together, it was the kids need a place of their own. Like, you know, like you're using a college room, it's okay, but they don't feel like they belong to it. When you're using high schools that it's another, it's, you know, somebody else's high school and then somebody else is coming into it, they don't feel like they belong to that. Somebody's got to make sure that the, the room is open or cheerleading's not using it because the weather, it's wet outside. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's also limitations for education at, at, you know, Got uh, insurance issues too, potentially with schools yeah. Yeah. and colleges. So now I, this, this, these kids, it's, this is their place. This is their this is their gym. I mean, we we pay the rent on it, but it's just like their home. I mean, they that's they love coming here. The kids they got their own like you know cubbies, but they have like their own individual cubby. Like, ooh, that's my cubby. I use that cubby every every Sunday since you know three years ago. You know, they just they they just feel like they belong. So it's it's awesome. <laughs> It's, it's like your grandparents. It's their church. place, right? It's not ours. They'll push <laughs> us around in here. Your grandparents seat at church. You cannot sit in, in grandma's grandma's pew. That just does not happen. Now, when you look around in this the three giant mats in here, the, the the flags of the respective colleges, and you look at the way these kids have performed, then you look at the Christmas tournament last weekend and the number of kids that have come through these doors, whether it be these very doors here or the ones at Shoreview at the old place. What does that make you and Brandon think when you look back and be like, wow, like – more than half the champions are from our place. Yeah, and and um, that's awesome. Um, I think more than anything, it just lets us know that we're we kind of try to tell these kids, you know, it, it's on, it's up to you, right? We're a resource. Your high school coaches, they're resources. Everybody are just resources, but it's going to ultimately come down to to one person putting it together, whether that's athletically, whether that's technically, whether that's mentally. You know, everybody's got their their niche. So when they find a way to pull it together, it's it's um, it's awesome. I I just you know I I hope we're just a, a resource for them along with um, everything else. And you mentioned resource and high school coaches. This is something that's also been a problem with some of these clubs that are run out of high schools. Is other coaches feel that say the club coach at powerhouse high school and in insert state here using it as a recruiting tool. You guys are agnostic when it comes to who you're training, where they're from in terms of what school district they live in, what school they're going to. Has that kind of given you guys a little bit more leeway in terms of what you're teaching and how you're teaching it with some of the high school coaches that, you know, may be worried about their kids transferring to a place where, with a coach that may have more resources? Um, I, gotta, I hope not. I, I again, I, I hope I hope most high school coaches, and I, I, I see it getting better and better. There, believe it or not, was a time that, you know, the clubs weren't as big, you know, like even five years ago, right? So it's like if you started a club, a high school coach, and everybody's got egos, especially in wrestling. So a high school coach letting somebody else, you know, help train some of his athletes can be a little tricky. And um, so I, I think now it's it's getting better where people are – understanding that we're all on the same we're all on the same team our our goal is our goal Brandon and I and everybody else at Pinnacle our goal is to let everybody get to the best wrestler they can be that's also what that high school coach wants he just only wants his high school wrestlers <laughs> you know we want everybody so as as 
as wrestling progresses, any any way that um, people can get better at wrestling, however that is, uh, it's awesome. I, I hope everybody's on page with that because that's ultimately what we all want for our kids is the opportunity for them to be the best wrestler that they can be. You talked about the youth and branching out a couple of years ago, going in different directions. If you're, well, how old do you want somebody to be when they walk into these doors first time? I mean, so, this, this is probably going to be a daunting place for a first or second year kid. I mean, wh- what level are you expecting when they walk in and sign up? You know, we, we try to at least have them have a few years of experience. And sometimes it, it doesn't happen. Some people just are like, yeah, pinnacle, let's put them in there. Um, we've heard that it's really good, so we'll just do that, and they won't know anything. So it's just as it just yeah, it slows down a certain group. Normally, it's just our, our little ones, you know, like our we have a pre elite one, which is like um, this year was the first year we made all six year olds try out, just so that we at least knew six year olds have a basic idea of wrestling, and more than more than that, um, can pay attention and can be focused versus you know screaming and running around where it's going to hurt everybody. It's a little different, you know, building like a, sandcastles at second place playing t ball. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just it's a, it's people are paying you know money, um, so it's nice to to know that they're not going to be a huge distraction. Almost every six year old is going to have a a little. ADD in them, but mm. so we just that was this is our first year that we actually just just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Otherwise, seven and up, you don't really necessarily try out, but we try to encourage like this shouldn't be your first year wrestling. You should you should have a few years of wrestling under your belt. You should know the basics, you know, penetration steps, your doubles, your high crotches, your singles, sprawl, top position, bottom position, so that we're not spending time, valuable time you know, reinventing the wheel of, okay, this is a referee's position. Nope, nope, other knee down. Nope, nope, other foot. Other foot up, other knee down, elbow, stomach, the stuff like that. Right, so they're not coming off the street in here. You're going to want probably, okay, if they want to compete more, they want to learn more, maybe at a more accelerated rate, that's where you come in. Now, uh, use myself as an example. I didn't step foot on a mat till 16 years old. So I go into wrestling club practice, and I enter my first open tournament, after two practices, probably not the most ideal situation to start my wrestling career. Matter of fact, it was quite painful when there's say a kid that discovers wrestling and loves it. Maybe at a, at a marginal program uh, may not, their coach may not be big into the off season work, or maybe they coach baseball or track and field and they don't, they're, they're, they're a seasonal coach. They're not a lifer like we are. How do you kind of mold that kid into something, you know, some of the, they may, they may understand what a penetration step is, but their technique may not be good enough. How does that kid get better here? And how does that kid not get discouraged when you've got, you know, Griffin Perry out in there pinning kids in 10 seconds in the state finals? Yeah. You know, usually, um, usually some, some of the classes can somewhat be tailored a little bit. We try to push like a lot of these kids in this class, it's still up to them um, and then we, we, we just, we, we try to do our best job of somewhat keeping the groups in the same talent era, just, just for purposes, but like, not you know, necessarily promotion and relegation, but if a kid is now gotten to the point where, okay, now you can go work out with the, the, this, yeah, this group. just so it's just not, you're not just getting tore up all the time. And sometimes the pace can be a little better too. If you have a one group that's very accelerated, that pace can be accelerated, but if you have half accelerated and half, you know, average your pace is has to be in the middle you gotta you gotta treat both people so it's it's different it's different you know hopefully um you know a, a high school brain can comprehend the technique a lot quicker than like a seven-year-old that can't pick it up so most of the time we've had a few high school wrestlers that you know have not wrestled before like trey story man he was like our greatest uh, advertising tool because he we had like one year of wrestling underneath him was not very good. Um, comes with us two years later, he's in the state finals. Just he just he didn't know anything, so it was he, Roseville kid, right? Yeah, he never picked up any bad habits. So everything you know, he he started off instead of penetration steps, he started off in underhooks and two on ones, <laughs> and just kept going with it. <laughs> and it was it worked. It was awesome. Success stories like that, and then you've got. Kids that have come through the program now, you've been around long enough that, that, you know, you can say kids came through this program. They didn't supplement. Uh, they weren't already good when they got here and then got that much better. But when a kid comes in that is already mastered, is is pretty much elite, nationally ranked, how do you and Brandon make him better? 
or her in this case, because too, because there's what you know, yeah. women's wrestlers around here that are. You know, good. I I think like anything, right? Um, we have a little bit of a system that we do, and I think anybody who buys into whatever system you got going on, normally that's that's where they progress. You know, we do do a very big job of um, controlling ties and getting in, and you know, we have our control ties that we like. And people that buy into that, they seem to take off a little bit better than the the ones that just, you know, show up and they do the technique, but they don't totally buy into it. And I suppose that's like any school, right? Any any high school, if you have a system that you do, the kids that buy into that system, that's, you know, most high school coaches, they got a, a system of what they want. And it's not that the system is right or wrong. They're just different. And the people who buy in, I would bet that they do um, better off buying into that whatever the system is between you and brandon you get the freestyle and the greco thing kind of taken care of in between both of you combined the folk style thing is not a problem so all three styles when do you guys break off and know that okay that kid might be better off to be training more in greco uh than in freestyle i mean is that something that you guys have conversations with you know uh their high school coaches the, club, the maybe their main club coaches or is it something like well you're gonna wrestle both styles or you know how do you develop the off-season training you know program. that that gets that gets a little more tricky just this is a state that's good at both yeah, times yeah it just gets it gets a, a little tricky you just got to tread lightly there on some things and because some parents and high school coaches it had just it everything there's just a lot of variables that that play into it you know with like college recruiting and certain styles and got to place higher in freestyle because that's where the scholarship is uh, it's just it's just it's 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 you just got to tread pretty carefully there but i mean if some kids i mean some kids are just more than i wouldn't say freestyle and greco as much but i would say freestyle greco versus folk style you'll have guys that are much better at, at one of those than the other one just because they're their mat game isn't as good or their defense isn't as good, but they can head pinch like a you know, like nobody else and they can score big points. You know, they 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 score, you know, four point takedowns and head pinches versus, you know, shots and takedowns. It's just it just those 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 wrestlers tend to do better in in freestyle. In there's, there's one division one wrestling program in this state at the University of Minnesota. There's numerous quality division two division three programs but there are more than just 10 division one worthy wrestlers coming out of this state each year as you can see by the flags there's various schools of various different sizes in division one you've got big 10 you've got eiwa you've got uh schools in the mac you've got them pretty much all over the place you and brandon were both gophers how is uh how is that balance between you know where the kid wants to go versus you know that 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 allegiance yeah, I mean, to your alma mater bit? yeah we all, <laughs> you're always going to have that um that small bit of allegiance but we we have said from the very beginning that this is something that we do not get involved in mm-hmm. like we don't we don't get involved in any recruiting whatsoever because it it's not good for us It'll actually, it'll, it'll, it could, it could destroy the nice thing that we have going here. You wouldn't if, have 10 flags on if, the wall. If people think that we're only Minnesota people, then we would lose, you know, the, the fact that these other college coaches come in and they, they don't feel threatened to come in. They don't feel like we're just forcing people to Minnesota. That's, you know, that would, that would hurt us a little bit. And some of that's our great, greatest uh, attributes. I just had a guy tell me the other day, he was like, did you, um, did you, um, hear the um, interview that Bono did. And I was like, I, you know, I did. And he was like, he pretty much, they asked him how, if recruiting was hard. And um, he said, no, I mean, I just drive to Pinnacle. That's all I got to do. <laughs> you know, so when, when a He's coach told is, me the same thing, so when yeah. a coach is doing that, that's, that's, that's awesome for us. I mean, for, I mean, I would think for marketing and advertising, stuff like that, I think that would be huge for other, you know, for parents um, to hear. So that's, uh, and that's that's why we got the flags out there, and we try to only have flags um, where we have actually wrestlers at. Mm-hmm. So every one of those flags, we actually have a wrestler there, except for Bucknell. But Kevin Lavalley, you know, coached here for a few years, so we figured that was you know we could put his up too. Actually, Bono. I was the first year I went to the Minnesota State Tournament, but I'm actually sitting with Bono, and he's sitting there talking. And uh, I don't know if we were off the record or not, but I'm going to say that story anyway. And he goes, "You know, this is this was the biggest mistake Bobby and I ever did." And he's talking about Bobby Douglas is not recruit the state of Minnesota. When you're part of a group of kids that come through, 
you know, whether it's generationally or you get a special group of seniors or there or there's a group of freshmen that become special by the time they're seniors. What's it mean to you when you go to the NCAA championships and see your kids out there wrestling on the? Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Like this, this year was our first like you know generation where Paulson and I were together with kids that we had three days a week. I mean, granted, he had, last year you know he had like Mitchell McKee, mm-hmm. um, but this year with um, Mitchell and Hunter and Owen Webster and Taylor Vence and Griffin Perriott, you know Brady Berge, you know some of those are redshirting, some aren't. It's just it's 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 gonna be fun, man. We're it's a, it's exciting. Owen got. A- a jump on the D3 last year, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like Taylor Vence is having a phenomenal year this year. It's just a three pounder at one point, or yeah, a six pounder, six whatever. pounder. Yeah, as a freshman, man, he went from 106 to I've seen your 200. fridge. There's not a whole lot in here. That's got to be on. That's 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 mom and dad feeding <laughs> yeah, there. That's whatever they're feeding him. I want the recipe myself. I don't. I'm already big enough. <laughs> as we look, get, circling back to the recruiting thing for a minute, though. There's been numerous stories that have come out. I guess uh, like Youth One has put some stories out in the National Recruiting Services. Uh, you know, they're wherever you want to find them. But they're saying that, uh, especially in team sports, that the odds of a college coach showing up at your high school basketball game to recruit are slim and none because of the, the disparity in talent. If you're a, you're a five star point guard and you're in you know class A against a kid that's also playing five different sports at a co op school, you're not going to see what this kid's got. So they're calling the club coaches and seeing you know like minded type of like like and kind competition. When college coaches call you guys, it's not necessarily a recruiting pitch, but what are they typically looking to find out that they would find out from you as a club coach versus um, a high school coach? I think more or less like focus, um, you know, how driven is this wrestler? And, and the, the main one that we, we keep kind of circling back to is like, does he like to compete? You know, what's he like? Does he does he like to compete everywhere? Is he scared to compete? You know, what's what's that? I mean, the majority of these people, if they're going to college, right, they're 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 pretty good. Um, they all drill pretty good. They all wrestle pretty good. So it's, it's trying to decipher those other things, you know, like when he drills, does he, is, does he screw around or is he 100% like, I got to get as many numbers in of this drill that I can do, you know, and when it comes to competition, is he, is he fearless with it? You know, what do they, they, do they, do they have that look? Um, you know, I think that's more or less what they're trying to find out is is character points, not wrestling points. They can watch the wrestling points. They can see those. They can be like, yes, this kid's got skills. But what's his character like, in my opinion? Shifting gears to the relationship between the state. We've talked about the relationship with the high school programs. But when I moved here, I realized how efficient and awesome the state chapter uh, for USA Wrestling here is in Minnesota. It's the Minnesota Storm for those of you that, oh, I don't know, just moved here and may not be familiar because it's a Minnesota show. But I, I look and I see the organization from the top down. I mean, you've got elite level coaches. You've got great pairing officials. You've got great administration. And how does Pinnacle tie in and its relationship with with the state chapter with the Minnesota Storm? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, right now um, I'll – somewhat oversee the the freestyle guys and Paulson somewhat oversees the uh, Greco guys. It's a little bit less now um, with him with Greco just because they, they had a little bit of a budget um, issue. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, yeah. Well, yeah whatever you want to call it. Um, so I, I think he still works with um, a few guys there, but I think they're running some of their practices out at the U. And then I'm essentially the RTC slash senior level coach for right now. Um, and we just we run those out of, you know, out of the U. And it's 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 completely separate than Pinnacle. That's just, you know, college coaches are like, we don't have any time to really overlook and oversee these guys. You know, can you help us out a little bit? That's all. That's that's more or less what that is. Other than there, there's been practice here, here and there. I know I've, yeah, yeah, I've, the yep. other place, you yep. know, the, here and there. The time Jake Clark occasions. brought me in to try to, I don't know why. Greco yes. used to uh, run all of them out of here um, mm-hmm. up until this year, and now they're kind of at the U, and they were running them out of Augsburg, and they were they were having some time issues and and things like that. And I think they still do some here, and all their strength guys see our guy, our PT guy Josh, um, which does a phenomenal job with them. Um, so, yeah. Now, we'll talk about the location. I want to circle that as we close up this particular episode of the Guilty and Grapevine. The old, old location was not a bad location, right off 694 Northside. 
and you know, right off, you can go, go a couple different ways to get there. You know, once you go past the bat, the Vadness and Taco Johns, or you can come the other way uh, past the Five Guys. I'm going to the food places that I know. Now here, you're right off, pretty much off 35W. Both of them were great locations. It seems to me this might be a little more conducive to, to the South Metro. They don't have to go that extra 15 minutes to yeah, serve you on a day like today with the, the take the back roads. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I do think that um, I do think this is a better location. You know, we have like a, at least fifty percent of the people come. I mean, we're we're very scattered around. Like we've we've done our demographic, I you know, plot, and it's like they're everywhere around the circle. But there is a ton from that lower half as well, so that will save them. You know, not much, but it saves them. You know, maybe seven minutes. Hurts me seven minutes, but well, seven minutes is a college man. That's what they're <laughs> training for, right? Seven minutes. When you you look back and when Brandon comes aboard, what were your ultimate goals and how close are you guys to achieving those goals? Well, you know, I, I think one, we, we both really have a passion for wrestling. It wasn't just something like, hey, let's do this. It was like, you know, we want to. It's not a side hustle. Yeah. We we want to help kids be the best they can be and um, and 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 try to make a living doing it. You know, everybody's got to, you know, make money somehow. So if we can do this, doing, if we can do that, doing something we love, it's, it's great. And then I, the rest of it is I, you know, it's, it's probably just competitive nature, you know, just, you know, we're, we're both super competitive athletes and now we're both super competitive coaches. I mean, we get along with all these other coaches, but that doesn't mean that, and I don't want my kid to crush your kid. <laughs> I mean that in a nice way, but that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's competition is what makes us all better, right? How hard is it watching two kids that you coach compete against one another in a, fi- a big tournament final like a Fargo or a, or, or Northern Plains or a state Yeah, it's exciting. I get nervous for both of them, you know, just because for us, it's a, you know, it's a win-win. So well, you, you've gotten to probably see it so. a lot more than, the t- say, 10,000 people at the the Yeah, like, like state, like like state, like like state every finals, day. you know, that we see it a lot where it's just, you know, and, and for us, it's just we it, we don't like any, we don't really have favorites. So it's just like, yep, yeah, that's awesome. We're, yeah, we got state champs. It's great. Now let's just let those two duke it out and almost amazingly almost all of them are awesome friends you know our parents are are especially our youth parents once once the kids start driving themselves then we don't start seeing the parents anymore but right now if you were to stick out for wednesday you're going to see a bunch of parents that are going to come here especially in our elite group you're going to see 20 parents come here they're all going to stand around for about five minutes and then they're all going to get in their cars and they're going to go somewhere and they all go hang out and have a beer and eat dinner and, and do that somewhere local yeah, and new they, location. They, you actually got a lot. And a they few come more back options. three hours later, <laughs> and they pick their kids up. <laughs> a couple more options here, here, because uh, Barley Johns and and is right down the street. If you like, uh, if you're a craft beer, I'm not saying this is a high school. I'm talking about high school kids, but if you like the craft beer and really good food, I would recommend that place. Now, Brandon being an Anoka guy, and Anoka coming off. Pretty good performance at the Christmas yeah, tournament, you'd yeah. say. Uh, how hard was it to contain him and in, in that, in, that inner favoritism? It's one thing being the U, but when that's your high school alma mater. You might have to rein him in a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll have to stick on him. I don't have to. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, no, I I think that's awesome. And it was actually he was actually saying we have um, we have one guy, um, Richie. We call him Richie Loco. But he he said he's like he pretty much won it for them. You know, he's like 195 pounder to third. He was like he he was the 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 main guy that they weren't sure how. You know, he just ended up getting a lot of points and taking third and great job. And that's he was that's what Paulson was saying. He's like that's that's the guy who ended up winning it for Anoka. Two questions as we we close up talking about various. This, we're in a high school season now. Right now, I get the two college guys working out as uh, they're coming over break. How often do you see the high school kids during the high school season, uh, or is that something that's kind of optional? Um, you know, they, we have a, an option for it. It's a Sunday only, mm-hmm. and it's it's very low key. There's no live in it. It's really um, troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of question and answers. Like, you know, what come in? Let's decipher what's what's going on in this match. And we watch a lot of film, just small things that um, you know that you would you you might. You might start overlooking or missing or something like that. You know, just just fine tuning. It's actually one of my favorite um, sessions, just because I'm a 
I'd like to consider myself a pretty technical coach. And that's when you can really break everything down. You know, like our preseason, you know, it, it's like we got to get these guys ready. We got 30 practices or 20 practices, depending on what cl- what you're signed up for, to get you ready for the high school season. So a lot of it is we're, we're kind of firing through stuff like, okay, we got to touch all this stuff. Now is when we can actually go back in and break everything down to this, you know, minute detail. That's so I, I I enjoy it, and then we'd switch, you know, when we got a right after high school season, we train for like the folk style national tournament, and then we switch over into freestyle and Greco after that. Talked earlier about uh, the coaches trusting their kids with their kids, basically, because uh, they're representing their high school team during a season. When you get college kids come in, what, are there any conversations with the college coach? Uh, you know, right now let's let's use Kale Sanderson and Tony Ursland as an example. Their their kids are in here working out. They're they're at Big Ten schools against you, they're, they're both from Minnesota. But is there any dialogue between uh, the coaches? Um, like, hey, you know, let's... I haven't talked to Kale. <laughs> I dealt with Brady um, on this, but like um, Ursland talked to Paulson straight up and was like, "Hey, Griff's in town and he needs some workouts. He's going to Midlands, you know." So they, uh, that's nice for us to it's know. Kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, you're, they, you're they on that level us. as as, yeah. as an athlete, as a competitor, and as a coach. But that's still kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, one hundred percent. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's just nice. You know, I mean, it just, it, it's a trust thing, right? It just means like, it's, it's nice to know that these, um, top schools trust us with their athletes that we're not going to screw them up in a week. Support wrestling in the land of 10,000 wrestlers by subscribing to the guillotine. Nine issues a year for just $20, the best value in Minnesota wrestling. Subscribe at theguillotine.com slash subscribe. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.